Four and eight digit hex values in CSS are great because they let you do variations of colors um, with different amounts of transparency without needing to use something like RGBA or HSLA. And they're available to use in everything apart from really old edge browsers, the ones before it was Chromium. If you're pretty good at maths, you may as well jog on because there's not gonna be an awful lot here I can teach you. By the way, I'm British, so I say maths as short for mathematics. Um, sorry about that. For everybody else, I'm gonna give you just enough hexadecimal knowledge, if you like, to be able to use these four and eight digit hex values in CSS in anger um, and know what you're doing with them. I'm a fan of HSL A color format basically because it uses that nice color wheel and of all the color formats it's the one that's perhaps the most human friendly if you can remember that mnemonic for the color wheel you can kind of get a rough idea given a degree of whereabouts it's going to fall in terms of colors that you can see but the reality is day to day nobody ever gives me hsl colors to work with and that's not the fault of designers when i get designs from somebody they typically all the colors are going to be specified as hex values and I can understand that because when I'm designing something myself, whether I'm using Sketch or Figma or whatever, I'm setting colors from the default color picker and they almost always get set as a hex value. So it's small wonder that that's the value that we pass around whether we're in design or dev or whatever. Hex colors are based on a hexadecimal numbering system. Now, unless you're some kind of mathematical savant, you'll be used to using decimal, which is counted to 10. Um, but a bit like Spinal Tap, kids ask your parents if you don't know what I'm talking about hexadecimal goes up to 16 now don't get hung up on that now I'm going to tell you everything that you need to use this without needing to be able to count in 16s so with that bold promise I better get on and show you what I'm talking about in CSS a colour is typically represented by a hex value like this so it can either be three digit or you can use the six digit version where everything gets doubled out okay and you hopefully know, but just in case you don't, the, the values here are actually red, green, blue. That's the way that hexadecimal works. And some combination of those red, green, and blue colors gives you the color that you actually want to see. It's a bit like when you're a toddler and you mix paints. Now, all the eight digit or four digit versions of this do is add an extra channel on here. So you've got red, green, blue, and then you also get alpha, which is represented by two alphas, parts, if you like, on the end if you're using the four digit, sorry, if you're using the eight digit, and if you're writing the four digit version, it's gonna look like that. But these values are still hexadecimal. So it's not a case of doing hexes as in, um, you do your normal hex and then do like a one to 10 for your opacity transparency. You still gotta think about it in terms of hexadecimal. Now, if we, if we look at the W3C color spec for eight digit hex values, it says this. The first six digits are interpreted identically to the six digit notation. The last pair of digits, interpreted as a hexadecimal number, specifies the alpha channel of the color, where 00 represents a fully transparent color and FF represents a fully opaque color. Okay, so try and hold that in your head for a moment. I've got this code pen example here just to give you some idea of the scale. So when you're thinking of moving something between nothing and full, you perhaps think used to thinking of it in terms of decimal, so you'd go from like zero is nothing and nine or you know ten effectively is up here. All you need to do to understand hexadecimal is understand that the numbers start at zero, they go up to nine as they would decimal, but then instead of stopping there, you get another six spaces, if you like, which are represented by A, B, C, D, E, F. So our scale that we need to use is looks like that. So when we're creating our colors, we're gonna do our normal hex color, and then the end bit is gonna be something between zero and F. That's our scale, if you like. So all I've got in this code pen here is just some easy ways to show you this. Just so you understand what's going on here, I've got just a snippet of JavaScript up at the top, and all it's doing is it's taking the value that I've assigned these buttons down here, and it's setting that somewhere down here as a custom property here. So it's just gonna change the background to be whatever's in these buttons. So in terms of you understanding what's going on here, I'll obviously link up the, the code pen here. Just look at the values that's in here and represented inside the button. If we look at the first simple example, we've got down here FFF and then one, which if you doubled that out, so like if it's three digit, that would actually 
be translated by the machine, if you like, as that. So you'd have Fs and then double one at the end. Okay, so you can see there, that's very dark. There's not a lot of that color coming through. Now I know if I want 50%, for example, of that color, I can look at my scale and know that, well, half of 16 is eight. And so I can come in somewhere like that and I can set that to be eight. So I'm getting half of the alpha channel there. And then if I wanna see completely that color, i.e. it's completely opaque, I'm not letting any of the background in, I could just set it all to be four digits F. So even my alpha channel's F as well, which means there's nothing of the background leaking through behind. So to give you another example, hopefully clarify what's going on there. The background of this page at the minute is threes, which is a dark gray. If I change this to be a, an orange, you can see that our semi-transparent background here is letting 50% effectively of that orange through. Okay, so this is an example of white. So we've got a very low value, a halfway point, and then none of the background coming through at all. And then the same thing written here in the, the eight digit version. So exact, that's exactly the same as that. That's exactly the same as that. That is exactly the same as that. And then just to give you an example with a completely, you know, a non-white color, I've got the same thing here with an orange. So we've got choosing one here as our alpha channel, halfway point, which is about here. And then we're not letting any of it through. None of the backgrounds coming through. And again, here's the eight digit equivalence there. Now having this 16 digit scale means that for most practical situations you've got everything that you need there to take a colour that you've already got in hex and turn it into a semi-transparent version of that. If you just pick somewhere along that scale like you know that 25% is going to be quarter of 16 move four along and that's your value. You know if you want 75% of it then it's going to be 12 along that scale. For all practical purposes I've never found that I've needed more than those 16 stops, if you like, in order to get the kind of colour that I want to see. So if you can understand that, if you can just keep that 16, 16 digit scale, not digit, alphanumeric scale in your mind, you'll be able to convert any colour that you've got into a semi-transparent version of that colour. You could get more precise with this if you wanted to, but like I say, I've never needed to. But in that case, your double digit number, your alpha channel, 01, 02, 03, all the way up to 0F, and then it would roll over to be 10, 11, 12, 13, and on and on and on like that it goes. I've just never needed that kind of fidelity when it comes to setting the transparency of an existing hex color. And I think that's part of the reason I was tripped up using these things in the first place. So I would say, don't worry about that unless you have to. Just keep to that 16 stops and I think you'll be golden. Hopefully that's clear enough for you to start using these four and eight digit versions of, of hex values in anger. If this was useful, please give it a like. If you'd like more web, keyboard, tech related stuff, please consider subscribing. You can also find links to my blog, books, courses, all that sort of stuff in the description below. Thanks for being here.